Yes. Ms. Foley, you don't have to lift the mic up to, to answer. I just need you to answer my questions with a yes or a no, okay? Yes, okay. Thank you. Now, I want to be clear. As soon as you saw those guns, everything became hazy. Isn't that true? Yeah, for a second there, it, it did. Ma'am, you would say everything became hazy. Yeah, for a second, everything went hazy. So you're claiming that you heard that quote, fill it with cash barrel, but ma'am, that was after you saw those guns, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Now I want to be clear. You talked about these robbers on direct examination and you said they were wearing masks, right? Yes, they were. You know that eventually those masks were taken off? Uh, yeah, once, once the police showed up, uh, they, they, they unmasked them. So you saw what those robbers looked like? Uh, yeah, for, for a second when they unmasked them, yeah. You'd recognize a photo of one of those robbers if I showed it to you? I think so. I'm showing opposing counsel, Exhibit 3. Thanks. May I approach the witness with the same? You may. Handing the witness, Exhibit 3. Ms. Foley, this is one of those robbers, true? Uh, yep, looks like it. This photo accurately depicts what she looked like when you saw her? Uh, Without the mask, of course. No, I don't think she was wearing this shirt, but the face looks the same. Her face looks the same to you? Yes, it does. And you now know that her name is Lori Boothman? Yes, that's, that's what I've been told. We offer Exhibit 3 into evidence. Exhibit 3 has been offered. Is there any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Exhibit 3 is received. Ms. Foley, I'm looking for a number. How many times have you seen Mr. Barrow with this woman? I've never seen them together. You know that Zero. That what? Sorry, you asked for a number. Never mind. Sorry, what was that, ma'am? It was zero. Thank you. You know that the other robber's name is Charlie Floyd? Uh, yes, again, again, that's what I've been told. And you know what she looks like, too? Yes. How many times have you seen Miss Floyd with Mr. Barrow? Zero. Now, you also, we, excuse me, strike that, Your Honor. If, have you ever seen Mr. Barrow with a flip phone? Um. I can't recall ever seeing him with the phone, um, so, so no. Alrighty, I want to talk about another bank employee. Like you talked about on direct examination, you know that Mr. Cassidy Sutton is the manager of the bank, right? Uh, yes. And most of the time when you were making those deposits, he was at the bank too? Uh, sure, I definitely saw him from time to time. Ma'am, you cannot tell this jury whether Mr. Sutton agreed with those robbers to commit this crime, can you? Uh, no, I, I don't know anything about that. The last thing I want to talk to you about is that red envelope you mentioned on direct examination. Now, you said that you did not see Mr. Barrow put that envelope in the bag, true? Uh, yes, that's correct. You even told us that you never saw him open that envelope? I never remember him opening it, no. Well, ma'am, did you not remember or did you not see it? Uh, no, I, I don't remember seeing it, if that makes sense. But, ma'am, you do know that you saw Mr. Barrow put the money from your envelope in that bag, didn't he? I assume that's where my cash went. I certainly never got it back. Ma'am, I'm not asking what you assumed. I'm asking what you know. You know that you saw Mr. Barrow put that money from your envelope in that bag. Yes or no? Uh, yes, I assume he did. Motion to strike is non-responsive. The portion that said, I assume, Your Honor. Response. Your Honor, some questions can't be answered with a simple yes or no. Ms. Foley is clarifying her testimony. Your Honor, if I may. Um, I'd like the witness to state whether she in fact saw the envelope go into the bag. I never saw the envelope going into the bag. Does that solve our problem? Uh, Your Honor, my question was actually about the cash that was within the envelope. She did see that put in the bag according to her sworn statement. Let's try it one more time. Certainly, Your Honor. May you direct her to answer with a yes or a no this time? Uh, the witness should answer with a yes or no if possible. If she can't, she should explain why she can't. Certainly, Your Honor. Ms. Foley, you know that you saw Mr. Barrow put your cash in that bag to the robbers. Yeah, so he put cash in the bag, and it must have also been my cash, because I never got my cash back, so yes. Your Honor, motion to strike is not responsive. Anything from counsel? Your Honor, we believe that this was directly responsive to the question. Ms. Foley was simply elaborating on her answer in a way that directly responded to Ms. Conkle's uh, question. The, mo the motion to strike is denied. We'll let the jury make of it what it will. Yes, Your Honor. So to be clear, ma'am, even if you did not see that envelope in the bag, 
You saw Mr. Barrow put that cash from you in the bag. Objection, Your Honor. Ask an answer at this point. Your Honor, I'm just clarifying. Well, um, I think technically it is the same answer, but the witness has been um, interesting in her response. I'm going to allow it. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So just one last time, Ms. Foley. Yes or no? You saw Mr. Barrow put the cash that you brought in that day in that bag. I assume so. Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you, counsel. Redirect? No, Your Honor. We ask that Ms. Foley be excused. The witness may step down. Is the government prepared to call its last witness? Yes, Your Honor. At this time, the prosecution calls Agent Kelly James to the stand. Agent James, please come forward to be sworn. Excuse me, you have been sworn. Yes, Your Honor. Permission to proceed? You may. Could you please introduce yourself to the members of the jury? Sure. My name is Kelly James. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And how did you get involved in this case? Well, I was the responding agent from the Bureau for what was purported to be an armed robbery at the Third National Bank back on October 31st of last year. Mm. I then led the subsequent investigation into the matter. Agent, why was the FBI involved in this investigation? Well, because Third National Bank is a bank that makes transactions that cross state lines, the FBI has jurisdiction over this matter. And so what time did you arrive at the scene? Well, my partner and I received a call from local police, and we arrived at the scene of the crime at approximately 11.45 on the day of the robbery. And so, Agent, I want to talk about how your investigation proceeded. Right. What was the first thing that you looked at when examining the bank? Well, upon arriving at the scene, we found two suspects that were already in custody. And what were you able to recover from those suspects? We recovered a pair of ski masks, as well as a pair of handguns, and a bag of loose cash. So what were you able to conclude about what you recovered from those two people? Well, that evidence, combined with the fact that local authorities saw these two individuals at the bank, led us to believe that we had found our suspects. So what did you do next? Well, the next thing we wanted to do was to try and recreate this robbery, to so see if we could find any additional evidence by finding out what happened. So, Agent, how did you attempt to reconstruct this robbery? What was your first step? Well, the first thing we wanted to look at was actually to work backwards. So the first thing we did was look to see how the local authorities were notified that there was an ongoing robbery. And so, Agent, what sort of systems can banks have in place to alert the authorities of a robbery? Well, most banks, in my experience, uh, they have some sort of silent alarm system that can notify the authorities in the event of a robbery. And did you know whether the Third National Bank had any sort of silent alarm system? Yes, ma'am. We found that system, and then we examined it. And had you worked with that system before? Uh, yes, ma'am. We had seen that system before. I had examined it on numerous occasions. And Agent, can that system be disabled or manipulated in any way? No, ma'am. This silent alarm system is equipped with anti-tempering technology. It can't be turned off, silenced, or shut down in any way without the FBI being notified. And so is there any way to activate the alarm without notifying the authorities? No, ma'am. If this pedal is online and ready to go, and the, the, the teller they press down on it, the alarm is sent off to the FBI. We're notified. If this system is malfunctioning, disabled, turned off, we're also notified. The only way in which the FBI is not notified is if this system is online and ready to go, and the teller doesn't press on it. So did you receive an alert on October 31st, 2017? No, ma'am, we did not. And so what did you conclude from that? Well, that led us to believe that the person on duty that day, Parker Barrow, may not have pressed down on it. So what did you do after concluding that Parker Barrow didn't activate the alarm on the day of the robbery? Well, the next thing we wanted to do was continue working backwards. So we wanted to see if we could find out what actually happened during this bank robbery. Well, what were you looking for? Well, we were looking to see if there was any sort of security footage that could show us what was happening inside the lobby area of the bank. Would you know whether the Third National Bank had a security camera? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we found one security camera that was found in the lobby area of the bank. Did you look at footage from that camera? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we looked at footage from October 30th, the day before the robbery, as well as the day of. And do you know what the footage was able to tell you on the day of the robbery? Well, Counselor, unfortunately, it couldn't tell us much. What do you mean? 
Well, when we went to examine this security camera, we found that the lens of the camera was pointed upwards towards the ceiling, so it didn't record anything from the lobby area on the day of the robbery. And so what did you do after discovering that the camera was pointed at the ceiling? Well, we wanted to see how that camera got into that position. So we dusted the camera for fingerprints, and we looked at the usable footage that we did have from that camera. And so let's start with the usable footage that you had from the camera. All right. Could you tell from the footage when the camera was moved to face the ceiling? Yes, ma'am. That would be the day before the robbery, October 30th. And what time was the camera moved to face the ceiling? That would be at 6.05 p.m. And who was the last person that you saw in the footage before the camera was moved? It was Parker Barrow. And what time did you last see Parker Barrow on the footage? It was at 5.50 p.m., about 15 minutes before the camera was moved. So, Agent, I want to talk about those fingerprints as you recovered. All right. Well, first, do you have any training or experience in fingerprint analysis and collection? Yes, ma'am. That's part of our standard FBI training, and we use standard FBI techniques for latent fingerprint analysis in this case. And so what were the fingerprints that you collected from that camera? Well, we recovered two fingerprint samples. The first was found on the top of the lens, but that one was smudged, so we couldn't identify it. But then we found a second fingerprint on the side of the camera that we were able to identify. And were you able to identify any other fingerprints on any objects in that bank besides the camera? Yes, ma'am. We dusted a few other objects in the bank for fingerprints, and we actually found a ladder in the utility closet of this bank, which had a fingerprint that we were able to recover. Uh, we found that the security system was about 12 feet off the ground, so someone would likely need an elevated surface or ladder to be able to reach it. And Agent, did the fingerprint on the camera and the ladder match the same person? Yes, ma'am, they did. Who? It was Parker Barrow. No, Agent, I want to transition into something different. Did you run an investigation on the security contractor company at Third National Bank? You mean the one that manages the sound alarm and the security camera? Exactly. Uh, yes, ma'am, but we didn't find any relevant information from that investigation. Agent, did you examine the employee log at that security contractor company? Yes, ma'am, we did. It was, it was pretty short, though. There were only three people working for the security company. Agent, who were those employees? Well, it was, it was three males in their 20s. Now, Agent, I want to talk about what you recovered from those robbers. You said that you recovered a bag full of cash from each of them, right? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Were you ever able to recover a red envelope from either of those two robbers? No, ma'am, we did not. Did you find a red envelope at the teller counter of the bank? No, ma'am. Did you find a red envelope in the bank lobby? No, ma'am. Agent, did you find a red envelope anywhere in the bank on the day of the robbery? No, we did not. Was there anyone who you didn't search who was at the bank on the day of the robbery? Yes, ma'am, there was. Who? It was Parker Barrow. Thank you, Agent. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Agent James, good evening. Good evening, Counselor. Now, I'd like to begin my cross-examination by talking about that fingerprint analysis you did uh, at the bank on October 31st. All right. For the purposes of a demonstration, Agent, I'm going to put on this latex glove. Go right ahead, Counselor. I'm going to hand Mr. Barrow this box full of glassware. All right. I'm going to ask him to open up that box and take out a glass from it. Mr. Barrow, can you hand that to me, please? Thank you. Now, Agent, you would agree with me that when Mr. Barrow just touched this glass, he likely left a fingerprint behind. Well, it's, it's possible, Counselor. But it would be impossible for me to be leaving a fingerprint behind right now. Uh, well, that's correct. Usually when someone's wearing gloves, it's, it's be hard for there to be a fingerprint left. So in theory, Agent, you could then dust this glass for fingerprints. Uh, I, I could, yes. And you may recover one belonging to Mr. Barrow. That's possible. But you would not recover one belonging to me? Likely not. Likely not, or you wouldn't? No, ma'am. 
So based on the fingerprint analysis that you would perform on this glass, you may be able to conclude that Parker Barrow touched it. Yes, ma'am. But you would not be able to conclude that I touched it. Well, Objection. Um, Blocks foundation. Response. Your Honor, if I may, count, or Agent James testified extensively to the training that he's received in fingerprint analysis on direct examination. I'm only furthering questioning him based on that expert knowledge he has in fingerprint tests to explore the limitations of this method. What foundation is lacking, counsel? Your Honor, the questions I asked this witness on direct examination about fingerprint analysis were relating to the camera and the ladder. There's been no foundation laid that anybody was wearing a glove when they touched or moved those items, and so it lacks foundation now that opposing counsel is using a glove and asking this witness whether using a glove would leave fingerprints on that glass. Anything further? Your Honor? Yes, we will hear testimony later in trial that lines up with exactly what I'm saying right now. Response? Okay. And then we would ask to conditionally admit this, this statement now, but if we feel that foundation has been, hasn't been laid that the person who might have touched those objects was wearing a glove, then I ask permission to re-raise my objection. The objection is overruled. If you wish to uh, uh, make a, a connecting up objection later on, you can do that. Yes, Your Honor. Agent James, if you were to perform a fingerprint analysis on this glass, you would be not able to conclude that I ever touched it, true? Besides the fact that I'm looking at you, Counselor, no ma'am. Well, say you did find a fingerprint belonging to Mr. Bear on this glass. All right. That fingerprint would not tell you at what time Mr. Barrow touched this glass. On, in, on isolation? Correct. Right, that's correct. His fingerprint would not tell you why he touched this glass, would it? Well, presumably to drink wine or something. I know my wife Debbie uses that glass head, but... Agent, I'm not asking you to assume anything. Right. I'm asking based on the fingerprint analysis you perform on this glass, that would not tell you why he touched it. That's correct, Kansas. So, Agent, it certainly wouldn't tell you that he touched it because I asked him to. True? That's right. So, based on the fingerprint analysis you did on the camera at 3rd National Bank, you cannot rule out the possibility that someone touched that camera wearing a pair of gloves. That's right, ma'am. I'm only able to conclude that Parker Barrow touched the camera at some point in time. You cannot rule out the possibility that Mr. Barrow touched that camera before October 30th. True? That's correct. Now, I'd like to talk to you about the footage you mentioned on direct examination. So you watched the security camera footage for the night of October 30th, true? Yes, ma'am. And as you told us, that camera was moved at 6.05. That's correct. But to be clear, that camera does not show who moved the camera. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. And it certainly does not show that the person moving that camera used a ladder. That's right. We didn't see a ladder on the footage. Uh, we just saw the camera lens being tilted upwards. I'd like to talk to you about access to Third National Bank. Throughout your investigation, you became aware that there were two keys to unlock the bank, true? Yes, ma'am. Cassidy Sutton, the manager, he provided you with that information. That's right. Mr. Sutton told you that he had a key to the bank. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Sutton and Mr. Barrow. Mr. Sutton told you that he had a key to the bank, true? That's right. Him and Mr. Barrow, exactly. Agent, Mr. Sutton was also a suspect in your investigation in this case, true? Initially, yes, ma'am. Now, as you mentioned, Mr. Sutton also mentioned that Mr. Barrow had a key to the bank, true? That's right, Kansas. And of course, Agent, Mr. Barrow was also one of your suspects in this investigation. Yes, ma'am, that's right. Now, I want to be clear about something. Mr. Sutton never told you that he had given a copy of the key to his security company, did he? No, ma'am. Mr. Sutton never said that. Mr. Sutton never told you that his cleaning crew had a copy of their key, true? That's right. And to be clear, Agent, these keys that unlock Third National Bank, they're just your standard metal keys, right? Standard metal key, yeah, I suppose so. Not a key card. That's right. There's no log that exists that tracks who unlocks the doors to the bank, right? That's correct, yes ma'am. Agent, throughout your investigation, you had the opportunity to execute a search warrant against Mr. Barrow? That's right, ma'am. We had enough evidence to obtain a search warrant for Mr. Barrow's belongings. And that search warrant gave you the opportunity to do a thorough search of his home? Yes, ma'am. Of his car? Yes, ma'am. Of his computer? 
Yes, ma'am. And of his cell phone. That's correct. Agent, throughout all those thorough searches, you never found a flip phone, did you? No, ma'am, not in those searches. Throughout all those thorough searches, you never found a big red envelope, did you? No, ma'am. To be clear, you didn't conduct any of those thorough searches on Cassidy Sutton or for his belongings, did you? That's right, ma'am. We need evidence to obtain a search warrant. Exactly. You did not execute a search warrant against Mr. Sutton. That's right. We didn't have any evidence to do so. To be clear, Agent James, after you conducted that thorough search of Mr. Barrow's home, car, computer, and cell phone, you found nothing connecting Mr. Barrow to this robbery. No additional evidence, ma'am. You're right. Only the evidence we found at the bank. Thank you. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Redirect. Yes, Your Honor. But before I proceed, might I ask how much time I have remaining? Of course. Brief redirect, Your Honor. Agent, was there anyone seen on the security footage on October 30th after Parker Barrow? No, ma'am. Parker Barrow was the last person we saw on the footage. Was anyone else's fingerprint found on that security camera? No, ma'am. Just Parker Barrow. Agent, did you have any evidence that the person who moved the security camera wore gloves? No, ma'am. We have no evidence of that. Was there anybody working in the bank on the day of the robbery other than the Parker Barrow? No, ma'am. Just Parker Barrow. Was there anyone next to the silent alarm during the robbery other than Parker Barrow? No, ma'am. Just Parker Barrow. Thank you, Agent. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Any recross? Yes, Your Honor. Agent, you just testified that there was no one seen on the camera after you saw Mr. Barrow leave, true? That's correct. To be clear, the last time you saw Mr. Barrow was at 5.50. That's right. And the camera was not moved for a full 15 minutes after that. Exactly, ma'am. Agent, from your investigation into Third National Bank, you are aware that you can enter that bank without being caught on that camera, true? That's right, ma'am. There is an entire employee hallway at Third National Bank that is not covered by that security camera. Yes, ma'am, that is true. And at the end of that hallway, well, there's a door that leads outside. That's right. That door can be accessed by the keys we talked about, true? Yes, ma'am. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you, Counsel. Anything further? Nothing further from this witness. Might he be excused? The witness may step down. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, and at this point, we're going to take a five-minute recess. I want everyone to be back in their seats in five minutes. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Test, test, test. To the left. Please be seated. Is the defense ready to call its first witness? Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls Ms. Dillinger. Ms. Dillinger, please come forward. You've already been sworn. Sorry, I'm not sure if that's me. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Good evening. Good evening. 
please introduce yourself to the members of the jury. My name is Patricia Dillinger, but everybody around here call me Miss Patty. Is it all right if I call you Miss Patty? Nine, six.